Hi, it's Carolyn here. Before you start listening to this episode, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently in Switzerland doing my very own and long overdue trip around the country. I'm visiting some of the most popular destinations in Switzerland, as well as a number of lesser known places. And I'm traveling around by both car and train. If you'd like to follow along with my Swiss travels to see where I am and what I'm doing, make sure you follow Holidays to Switzerland on Instagram. That's Holidays number two Switzerland. Here I'll be sharing photos and reels as I go, and I'd love you to follow along. Now, settle back and enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Your host is the founder of Holidays to Switzerland.com and the Switzerland Travel Planning Facebook group, Carolyn Schonefinger. On this podcast, Carolyn will be joined by a variety of guests who share their knowledge and love of the country to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. This is episode 25 of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn. Today, I'm welcoming back Birgit Weingartner, the Marketing Manager for Switzerland Tourism in Australia. Birgit first joined me on the show way back in episode number two, which was, can you believe, just over one year ago. So I thought it would be a great idea to catch up with Birgit again uh, for episode number 25, which is a little bit of a mini milestone, uh, and to celebrate that, yeah, I've been able to continue doing this bringing you news and information from Switzerland for just over a year now. I hope you've enjoyed the episode so far and there's lots more exciting episodes planned and underway, ready to be published. So keep an eye out, make sure you subscribe on your favourite podcast channel so that you never miss an episode. Uh, In today's episode, Birgit is going to bring us up to date with the new border entry requirements. Uh, Some of us, those of us in Australia particularly, aren't able to travel internationally at the moment, but Switzerland has actually opened its borders to pretty much anyone uh, and there's different entry requirements depending on which country you are a national of. Birgit tells us a bit more about that and where we can find further information. She's also going to tell us about Swiss-tainable travel, which is a a new approach that Switzerland has um, started to highlight a bit more. Switzerland has been a very sustainable country for many, many years now, but um, they've put this new approach out to, to encourage others to travel more sustainably as well. There's been quite a number of significant new projects opened in Switzerland in the last 12 months, from tunnels to new cableways to uh, a wonderful uh, new chocolate exhibition. Uh, So Birgit's got more news on those for us. And she's also answering some questions that were asked in the Switzerland Travel Planning Facebook group and in response uh, to a call-out that I did in the monthly newsletter. Uh, So a number of readers had questions which they submitted and Birgit is answering those for us. Thank you for joining this episode. Uh, It's it's been really great, as I said, so far to record 25 episodes and there's lots more planned. So I'd love it if, uh, as I said before, if you subscribed so that you never miss an episode and leave a comment or give us a like and let's share the love and enjoy hearing and learning more about Switzerland so that we can all plan a dream trip of our own. Let's get started and and chat to Birgit. Hi Birgit, thank you very much for joining me again. Good morning Carolyn, it's very happy to be back on the show after a whole year. I know, it's gone so fast and to think that you were my very first guest back on episode two, um, I've had a lot of guests since then and hopefully the podcast has um, improved a bit. That was a pretty pretty basic effort back then but we, we bungled our way through so thank you it for was, sticking around and, and for coming back. Very good. It was great fun to do a year ago and we were following you all with all the podcasts and you, you were really busy. 
I have been busy. It's been a lot of fun. While we haven't been able to travel ourselves, of course, from Australia, um, so it's been good, and it's sort of given me my fortnightly fix of of Switzerland, which is which is really good. Now we mentioned there that um, we haven't been able to travel um, for a while, but um, the borders have recently reopened at uh, the twenty sixth of June two thousand and twenty one. So, can you tell us uh, a bit about the current situation in Switzerland for those that are able to travel there at the moment? Absolutely happy to do so. Switzerland has relaxed the entry regulations drastically. Um, that was on the 26th of June, as you just said. The Federal Council decided to take further wide-ranging reopening steps and relaxed rules on entering Switzerland. Um, the requirements to work from home and to wear masks outdoors, for example, have been lifted. Uh, furthermore, restaurants and are allowed to seat as many people together as they wish and large-scale events with COVID certificates will be allowed to take place without restrictions and capacity or the number of people present, which is which is a really good um, step in the right direction with um, with summer months and the school holiday, well, the European school holidays coming up now. Yes. Fantastic timing. It means travelling to Switzerland. Um, all persons arriving into Switzerland by air, even from a country that is not considered high risk, such as Australia, uh, for instance, and respective of their nationality, most must present a negative test result at the time of check-in at the airport. So, well, but that's pretty much a given. Um, if you need more information, there's a really good um, page on our homepage when you go on myswitzerland.com slash planning. Once you're on there, you've got all the steps you need to follow with all the regulations, and that's kept up to date because it changes every almost on a daily basis. Yes. So that is kept up to date every day. So that's a good homepage to double check if you are planning or if you want to know what is going on and what's open in Switzerland. Okay. And, of course, the, um, it's, uh, visitors are allowed to come into Switzerland from other Schengen countries as well, so they may not necessarily be flying in. They might be coming in by train or by car. So um, are the, the, requirement, the entry requirements for that situation on the website as well? That is all on there, absolutely. Um, they still need the negative test to mm -hmm. enter, but that's pretty much um, the given at the, mo at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay. So, yeah, we I will just um, remind everyone that we're recording this in July, early July 2021. So um, if you happen to be listening to it at the end of the month or next month or in a couple of months' time, please check that page on the website so yes. that you can have the most up-to-date information. So that was myswitzerland.com forward slash planning. Exactly. Great. Okay. Now, there's been a little bit happening in Switzerland in the past 12 months, and one of the things that caught my eye, being a big fan of this gentleman, is that uh, Switzerland Tourism recently appointed Roger Federer as an official ambassador for the country. What can you tell us about uh, Roger's appointment? Our beautiful Roger. Uh, we feel, of course, very honoured to work with Roger Federer and it is a long-term partnership and uh, as a global brand ambassador, and we couldn't be more happy about it. Um, um, we are going to plan a couple of global campaigns with Roger, um, and every year we're going to do um, integrate him in, in, in our campaigns um, as a brand ambassador. Mm, that's great. I mean, he's always been an ambassador for Switzerland, really, hasn't he, in, a, in an unofficial capacity. Um, you know, when you see him on... on on TV playing tennis, he's yeah, very proudly Swiss. And when you come from such a beautiful country, why why wouldn't you want to tell everyone about it? Absolutely, that's what he says. You, you might have um, seen our YouTube campaign we did with him, the No Drama movie, which we mm -hmm. did um, as a kick-off. And, you know, say he hasn't seen every corner of Switzerland just yet, but you can find out um, offers and exclusive insights um of his favourite spots and places he still wants to explore on our homepage as well. And you find that beautiful um, trailer as well on that homepage, and that's myswitzerland.com slash Roger. 
pretty simple, straightforward. Pretty simple. <laughs> Roger. No, no one needs Roger to know his name. Everyone just knows Roger from Switzerland. <laughs> uh, no, he's a, he's a, a great ambassador, that's for sure. He's. Yeah. I've seen a few things uh, mentioned lately about uh, Swiss Tainable. Um, which is um, a kind of a, a new approach to, to travel that my Switzerland are, are talking about. What's, what's that all about? Well, you know, sustainability has been shaping Switzerland for decades, really, um, whether through the predominant use of hydroelectric power, the high environmental awareness of the Swiss people, or the early and comprehensive expansion of public transport which illustrates what sustainability looks like in Swiss tourism. Created for the regional population, enjoyed by guests from all over the world. So what is sustainable travel? I get that question a lot. So it can mean different things to different people, but basically it means less travel of the rushing variety, less Mm -hmm. of the seven days, seven different places and in different countries. It means more time in one place, travelling slowly, with more depth. This in turn means that you meet more people, local people, which means you gain a greater understanding of the culture of the place. And from that understanding, your experience is your experience is enriched. So, you know, we've got a lot of topics around that on our homepage again, but I would always go, you know, why don't you do an experience on your two legs, which is the most sustainable way of traveling. Go hiking in Switzerland. We've got 65,000 kilometers of marked hiking trails. <laughs> that's it's The choice is endless. Mm. So that's that's a sustainable way. Or um, travel by train, as we just said before. You know, trains emit less than CO2 than any other form of motorized transport. And we've got every day 9,000 trains travel along around 3,000 kilometers of track in Switzerland, which is you know, you can go anywhere in Switzerland on public transport. And if you read, when you reach your destination, you'd go for a beautiful hike up the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're right about using the trains and your feet as much as possible. You know, it's it's tempting for someone if they're a first-time visitor to Switzerland and they think, well, this might be the only chance that I get to come to the country. So I'll, I'll try and cram in as much as I can in a short space of time. But you know, you're probably going to leave and you're not even going to remember where some of the places were that you went because you've tried to see and do so much. Whereas if you're using the trains and and you make a bit of a base, as you said before, you really get to immerse yourself in that the culture and and meet the local people and you can see so much sustainably on the the mountain excursions and going for a hike. So uh, I I think the the sustainable way is is a great way for people to consider travelling when they do visit Switzerland. Or you can just incorporate, you know, the Grand Train Tour. It's 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 probably a really good way of experiencing Switzerland for the first time. You've got the trains there, you've got... 10 days on uh, an, an experience with mountain excursions with the cities, but you do it all by train. That's how I did it when I was living in Switzerland. And it's in our system and it's on us now to actually showcase that to all the, the visitors coming yeah. to Switzerland that it is, it is once it, it's established, and that's up to each country, I suppose, it's the best way to, to do it. Mm. I I remember in one of uh, my episodes I was speaking to Andy from the Swiss Travel System and and he mentioned that, you know, something like 95% of the passengers on Swiss trains are actual Swiss people, but that's how they travel. They they don't need to to have, you know, to rely on cars and and so on. The the trains is the way they go and that's fantastic. They just have their, their rail card for all year round and that's how they do it. Yeah. Now, while we haven't been travelling much uh, in Switzerland the past sort of 12 or 15 months, there has been a bit happening and, and there's been a, and quite a few new openings that I've, I've noticed. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about some of those. Um, the first one that probably is a lot of interest to people who um, plan to visit the Jungfrau region in the future uh, is the Eiger Express Cableway. What, what's that all about? 
Yeah, that was um, that was in the making for many, many years. So the Jungfrau Railways, that's the private um, railway system in the Jungfrau region, they opened the V Cableway um, and the Eiger Express last year in December. So it is the Eiger Express is um, running to the Eiger Gletscher. That's a brand new station up in the mountain, and it only takes 15 minutes to to get there. So that means visitors will enjoy a quicker, more comfortable, high quality journey to the winter sports area around the Eiger Gletscher and the Kleine Scheidegg, as well as to the Jungfrau top of Europe. So visitors from all over Switzerland will save 47 minutes on their journey to, with the Eiger Express, which is, which is quite amazing. So what they did, they built a whole new station before you even get to Grindelwald to, you know, give Grindelwald um, a bit of a breather. Um, so they created the terminal Grindelwald Grund. So Grund is the new terminal before you even get to Grindelwald. And from there you get go on the Eiger Express right up to the Eiger Gletscher. And um, from there you can ski or hike or whatever you want to do. And you can connect then to the Jungfrau Jung. Okay. So whilst... Um Obviously, skiers can can take advantage of it in winter and, and get up there to the to the slopes much quicker. But also, just for tourists who are planning to visit the Jungfrau Jock top of Europe, it's perfect for them as well because they can get there that little bit quicker as well. Absolutely, there's so many so many popular hiking routes between the Mennichen and the Kleine Scheidegg or below the Eider North Wall. They can, all can be accessed through that terminal. Um, the start of the Eiger Trail and Jungfrau Eiger Walks can be reached now within 15 minutes, which which is amazing. So it just brings you up to the mountain so much quicker to enjoy than your hikes up there. Yeah, and you can still, um, I, I guess, travel one way on the Eiger Express Cableway if you're going to Jungfrau Jock, and then Absolutely. you can come, come back the other way on the train or Yeah, or the round trip. Person. That's still the same, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Now, what about the, um, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly, Chenery Base Tunnel? Yeah. The Chenery Base Tunnel. After the opening of the Gotha Base Tunnel in 2016, the Chenery Base Tunnel um, now completes the new Alpine Transversal, which is called the NIAT. Since, since trains can reach top speeds of up to 250 kilometers an hour on this new line, and the travel time from Zurich to Milano is shortened significantly. Also, new direct connections to Genoa and Bologna are being planned. Fast, comfortable and environmentally friendly for travelers as well as freight traffic. So it, it does make a huge um, change to all these north-south um, connections um, with the, the direction with, or with the with, with the high-speed trains to Milano, so they will have a lot more trains running. Mm-hmm. And for for you know for the north south X, it means um, so much better connections. Yeah, and, and much much faster. And the, just the the engineering and the the work that goes into those tunnels is just incredible, isn't it? Like when you think uh, how they can actually <laughs> build them, it's yeah, it's mind blowing. Absolutely. Um, if someone is really interested in uh, on how the, these tunnels were built, there is some really good YouTube movies about the constructions of these tunnels. Mm, yeah, amazing. Okay, now on to something that is, um, yeah, really um, close to my heart. <laughs> I do love a bit of chocolate. Uh, <laughs> and the Lint, Lint recently opened their brand new home of chocolate in Zurich. So t- please tell tell me more about that. They did, and you haven't seen it just yet. No, no. Oh. only photos <laughs> of that fountain. <laughs> <laughs> they did open the the home of chocolate back in uh, September last year, and is the world is another chocolate themed attraction richer. And what a what a what an att- attraction! They've got a nine meter high chocolate fountain in that home of of chocolate. Um, the Unique Chocolate Competence Centre uh, with the Interactive Museum Research Plant, Open View Production Line and many other highlights will be delighting visitors from Switzerland and you in mm, the future. Definitely me. 
you can even you can even do you know create the finest chocolates together with a real lint master chocolate you, yourself in a course you just need to pre-book that okay. but it, they have 500 square meters of uh, chocolate shop in wow. that in that building it's it's mind-blowing if you're a chocolate fan uh, I think it's a must go. Yeah. Okay. And and is it easy to get to if someone's staying in the in the centre of Zurich or in the old town? Is it easy to get to the the Lind home of chocolate? It's very easy. A few stops out of of town, and the address it's actually quite funny. It's Schokoladenplatz. One. Mm. So place of chocolate number one. <laughs> That's the only in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay and is there any other um you know new openings and things uh in the past year that we should know about there's there's a lot of other um smaller um openings Uh, we just opened last week a a beautiful five-star hotel up in engelberg which is the first five-star hotel which um they converted one of the old palaces um into a they, they kept the, the beauty of the palace style, but added a new complex to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kempinski um, took over the uh, the management of that hotel. But it's it's it turned out absolutely beautiful, and that was opened last week. Okay, mm. mm-hmm. so yeah, definitely somewhere special to stay. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Now, I did ask in uh, the uh, Switzerland Travel Planning Facebook group that I run um, if anyone had any questions about Switzerland. Um, yeah. Obviously, the group that's the purpose of the group. People can ask questions and, and other travellers and, and myself give them, you know, advice on what to see and do. But there's a few questions that I thought would be worth um, asking yeah, you. Please, and getting, getting fire your- away. Yeah, so um, Tanya asked, what local food should we try when we're in Switzerland? Well, it's pretty easy, isn't it? Well, um, we've got so many regions. We've got 26 cantons, which is the equivalent of states um, in in Australia. And every canton or even almost every city has its own local food and specialities. So what I would do wherever you go in Switzerland, ask what is your speciality? Because there's so many special dishes out there. With the four official languages, we've got four different cultures. We've got, and with those cultures, there's different food. You know, in the south, in Ticino, you would have more Italian-influenced dishes. Um, in the in the east, it's it's more you know the mountain hearty food. But they all have traditional food, and they all have specialities. Always ask, and they're more than happy to give you the rundown of what's special in that particular area. You can't go past, you know, the the Bratwurst, of course, mm-hmm. in St. Gallen, or the Zurich Schnatzlitz. Um, that's the, the the really creamy, beautiful sauce um, in Zurich with the real, real, yeah, in Zurich and the Rosti. Or the fondue up in a mountain, you can eat outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, there's so many special dishes. Um, we've got a homepage as well. If you want to um, even cook one of those dishes, you'll find it on our homepage as well. Wonderful. Go on the homemyswitzerland.com and go. It's probably local dishes and you'll find the recipes on there. Okay, lovely. Nancy has a really good question. Um, what are some four paths that a first timer might make? Um, for example, when they go to a restaurant or, or greeting something, is there something that you really shouldn't do? That is a really hard question, and I know I have to think quite hard about what what you could do wrong. But there's really nothing you can do wrong in Switzerland. You just as long as you when you enter a room and say "Kitty." You, that's accepted everywhere at any time of the day. Or, um, you say, you know, when you say start meal time, you say, and good, that means, you know, enjoy your meal. That's just what you do. You just, you don't just start. You say, you know, enjoy your meal and good. Or one tiny, and that's, that's what I, that's my, my personal view. When you cheers to someone with your drink. You always cheers. So you celebrate, you know, you celebrate um, sharing a meal or a drink. So when you cheers, you look 
in the person's eyes you cheers with and you cheers, you clonk. You don't just pour the wine and drink straight away. You celebrate it, you cheers, you look in each other's eyes and then you enjoy the wine. Mm -hmm. Little things. Um, other than that, there's one little thing when you go to a local pub or a local restaurant, there's always a stammtisch, which is the table for the locals. And it has a little sign. You would know what it is, but it's the table where the locals sit and no one else. So they wouldn't get upset about it if you would sit down because you wouldn't know, but they would look a bit funny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they would give you the look. <laughs> You don't look local to me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What are you doing? Are you a newbie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that, yeah, that's that's really good to know. You mentioned earlier that there are, I think you said, 65,000 marked trails, hiking trails in Switzerland. So Shane's question um, could put you on the spot a bit. Um, he asks, what are the best hikes to do in the Bernese Oberland? And he says, I have a list, but I only have six days in Grindelwald. So are there any that I must do or any to avoid? I guess to avoid is only um, if they're too challenging for his, you know, his okay. experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's so many options. I would, I would probably, when you get to Grindelwald, go to the local tourism office and ask, ask about, um, you know, weather condition, um, where he wants, to, you know, how many hours he wants to do about, they can talk about the fitness and what they're planning to do. But there's so many options in that, um, Jungfrau region. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe, you know, there's even, um, I did myself, I did the, a part of the Via Alpina, which is a, a long hike over 20, 20 days. But, one part of that Via Alpina goes exactly through that Jungfrau region. And you can pick days out of that Via Alpina. And that's on our homepage as well if you want to read about um, the daily stages through that region. And it gives you a bit of an idea on how hard or how easy it is about the signage and what to expect, you know, in in attitude change and 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 how the paths look. Mm -hmm. It's a really good homepage just to get an idea and to get your planning of what you want to do. You can do it, you know, in six days. It because it's a long, long distance hike. You can do it every day as a, 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 um, a stage, or you can just go from Grindelwald, do one day, do a hike. Um, one would be, for example, um, the. Schinige Platte, which is one mountain from Grindelwald, mm -hmm. and Mount Fürst. So if you do that hike, that's just along that mountain range, and you can easily do that um, on one day. It's about it's about um, 14 kilometers, but it's not because you're going up by a little um, mountain train to Schinige Platte. Then you hike along the ridge for about seven hours. And then you you end at Mount Fierce where you've got a cable car, car going down again. It's the most beautiful hike you see across uh, Eigenmönchen Jungfrau. And but it depends, you know, on your fitness, on how much hiking you want to do. But that's one of one of my highlights, I would say. You can even stay overnight halfway. There's a mountain hut halfway. You can have a meal there. If you want to only do three and a half hours one day and three and a half hours the other day and stay overnight in that mountain hut, it's an amazing experience yeah. as well. This. But there is, um, if he really wants to do some research about hikes, he should go on uh, um, the homepage Grindelwald.swiss and on there he finds so many hikes and they're all rated, you know, in, in, um, on how difficult they are. Yeah. It's a very good homepage for, for research. Okay. I've also got in the uh, in the file section of the Facebook group, there's a um, Jungfrau hiking map to which um, he could, yeah, print print out at home and, and have use as a reference to to when when he looks up those um, those hikes on the on the Grindelwald homepage, uh, yeah, refer to them on the map as well. 
Yeah, and they're shorter hikes. You know, there's an hour, two hour hikes, and they're beautiful. You know, you just go up um, to Mount Fest, for example, with the cable car, and then do two hours hike. You go up to Bachalp, say, which mm-hmm. is beautiful, yeah. beautiful, and you're million miles away from everything. You feel like you've hiked for hours, <laughs> but it's only an hour, really. Yeah. So there's so many options. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, it's a beautiful part of the world to, to do some hiking, that's for sure. It is. Mm. <laughs> Annette asked, do I need an international permit to rent a car in Switzerland? I had to research that as well. Um, it is um, a valid national driver license is enough for Switzerland. Um, it is recommended to have an international driver license because a lot of people don't not only travel Switzerland, they do a couple of countries. Yeah, that's right. And just to be on the safe side, I will go with the international driver license. But it is not necessary. Yeah. Okay. I just cross with Yeah. I just wanted to make a, a point there too that um, a lot of people say, you know, even if if they they're renting their car in Germany or France or wherever before they come into Switzerland, that oh, you know, like the rental car company doesn't didn't ask for a, an international driver's permit, but it's not a requirement of the hire car companies. It's it can be a local law in some of the other countries. It's the government. Yes. So if you get yeah. pulled over because you're speeding or just for a random check, um, that's when you need to pr- present the permit in, in those other countries. Yes. So for Switzerland, it's only a valid national driver license. Yeah. That's enough. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more question. Uh, Tony asked, will there be any celebrations or festivals this year on Swiss National Day, which is August the 1st, and obviously he's referring to the fact that there has been restrictions in place due to, to, due to COVID? Yes, they, they should be with, uh, with all the regulations. They've been relaxed. So I think, you know, every every week now is, is different, but it's our, one of our biggest days in Switzerland and I'm, I'm almost certain they will have events in. It's going to be local, mm-hmm. you know, every local area with the 26 cantons. Again, every canton has its own regulations. So, but. If, if he's interested to, to research, um, he should go on the local, um, a tourism board page mm-hmm. and they always have the latest events around the 1st of August celebrations on there. Okay. And, and yeah. in a, let's say in a normal year, what are some of the, the celebrations that, that take place? Are the, is it like fireworks or uh, markets or, or, or what sort of things go on? It's got a lot of log fires in the mountains where people go up the mountain, hike up the mountain, and then you bring all your picnic and sausages. You've got a big bonfire, and we all make our our dinner around the bonfire and and sit together, sing together, and we've got um yeah fireworks in the bigger cities, mm-hmm. of course, absolutely. Yeah, it's a very traditional, you know, again, every area has its own tradition around the 1st of August. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Birgit, for um, coming on the show again today and, and for telling us about what's happening in, in Switzerland at the moment. And and hopefully it's a, um, a really good summer for everyone in Switzerland because I know um, the tourism industry has been really badly hit, as, as have a lot of other um, different industries during the, the pandemic. So hopefully um, things are on the up and more of us can be back travelling in Switzerland soon. Uh, we all hope so. Uh, thank you so much for having us on, on the show today, Carolyn. And we really hope um, everyone is staying safe and, and we're all doing the right thing in Australia because we all want to travel as soon as possible. And um, just keep these dreams, this dreaming part up and we'll get to Switzerland as soon as soon as, as we can. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And I'll, I'll link to those uh, web pages that you've mentioned um, in the show notes for this episode. So if someone wants more information on a specific topic that we've chatted about today, they've got the exact page to go to. Um, and those show notes will be available at holidays to switzerland.com forward slash episode 25. Thank you again. Fantastic. Bill. Have a lovely day and, yeah, let's hope we're back travelling to Switzerland soon. Yes, let's hope for that. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. For more great resources on planning a trip to Switzerland, 
Make sure you visit holidaystoswitzerland.com where you'll find trip planning tips, destination guides, information on transport, including Swiss rail passes, and much more. You're also encouraged to join the Switzerland Travel Planning Group on Facebook where you can ask questions and chat to other past and future travellers to Switzerland. You'll find show notes from today's episode at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash podcast and be sure to subscribe to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast so you never miss an episode.